Hey everyone, it's Robin, the Queen of Resins. I'm here today for you to ask me anything about frankincense, only frankincense. So if you're here, you can ask me a question. If you're not, well, then you're only going to see what I'm going to tell you, even if uh, you don't ask me a question. I will tell you that I am, it's about two o'clock now. I'm going to have to try to figure out what's the best time to do these. And I'm going to put a poll in the group later on today and see what is the best time when most people are on. Because I know we have different time zones. And it's very, very hard to figure out the best time zone for everybody. So I did it at 5 o'clock and I got 10 people. I did it at 4 o'clock and I got 5 people. So now I'm doing it at 2 o'clock and we will see what happens. Uh, right now there are 7 people here. So that's a good sign. So if you can all say hello to me because Unfortunately, it does not tell me who's here, unless you type something. Ah, so Ingrid's here. Hi, uh, Ingrid. So there are, right now it's showing me that there are eight people. So Ingrid makes seven, I mean, makes one. So where are the rest of you? Type to me, and I know there's lag. I want to tell you first before anything, and we're, and uh, I'm going to wait till a couple of people get in. Uh, Jackie Glinky, I hope I said that right, uh, said hi. So now we have two people. Uh, it's telling me there are five people. So there are two more people that are not talking. So uh, now it's going up. I guess it goes up and down. But again, if you don't tell me who you are, then I don't know you're here. So at this point, it's telling me that there are five. So, oh, I said it right. Thank God. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie. So, because I'm very bad with names. Uh, okay, am I saying this right? Is your name Fam with an F? because it says P-H-A-M. So is it FAM? Am I saying that right? So let me know if I said that right, because P-H is usually pronounced on our side as with an F. So I do want to tell you, uh, before you start asking me questions, yesterday, I'm going to go into a little bit also, because you'll probably wind up asking me this too. You're from Prague. That's pretty far. What time is it there now? It must be pretty late because it's got to be, what, a seven, eight hour time distance? So maybe it's not too late. Maybe it's like seven, eight o'clock, nine o'clock in the evening there. So that's not too bad. The uh, Yesterday I posted these. These are my cookies, and you can see what they look like, and I put the recipe, oh, it's 8 o'clock there in Belgium, that's not bad, so then 2 o'clock might actually be a good time. So the cookies, which are wonderful, a chocolate chip made with Basuela Fariana. I had put the recipe in the group. And uh, as you see, you can make a lot of different things with, uh, with, uh, with the resins, which is, a, which is a great thing. And, wait a minute. And uh, it tastes absolutely fabulous. And the advantage of it is that it? I made it not too sweet because the semi-sweet uh, chocolate chips actually make it even sweeter. 
and you can just faintly smell the ferriana that's in it. You don't want to get it overpowering because anybody who doesn't know what the resin is is going to say, what is that smell? So, because uh, a very, very faint smell. When you put it in your mouth and you taste it, then you can taste the ferriana, but it's not that strong. That's why I only put two teaspoons in because the ferriana is very strong to begin with. And it is good. It is delicious. And it's made from this. Now, everybody's asking me, what do you do with the powder? How do you keep the powder? Well, this is some of it. I have more. And uh, this is in a Ziploc bag, as you see. And it's kept in the freezer. And when you keep it in the freezer, if you leave it out, you're going to get lots of clumps. And even in the freezer, you get a little bit of clumps. But then you can squish it down with your hands, and then it becomes nice and soft. The advantage of it in the freezer is there's no humidity. If this gets humidity, it gets like a solid rock. So it is not water soluble. So what happens in water, it becomes a solid rock. And if you get any humidity in it, forget it. You're, you're going to need a chisel and hammer to break it up. That's why I say keep it in the freezer. It stays very nice in the freezer. And you should not have a problem with it. Uh, there was somebody who, who messaged me and said, I put it in a glass jar, and now it is so, it is totally solid, totally solid. How am I going to get this out? Yes, you can watch later. Thank you, Farm. And uh, this will be broadcasted later, so you can see it also. And uh, I said that's going to be interesting, trying to get it out of the glass jar. And the only way I got her to do it was to basically heat it up. Uh, Ferriana is uh, oil soluble. That's why in the cookies, when I said to mix it with the margarine first or the butter, butter and margarine are carrier oils. So I said mix it in that first, then put it all together, and then cook it. Once you bake it, the heat will melt the farriana right into, into the cookies. And uh, this way, you won't taste it. If you use any of the other resins, the problem is you're going to have grit. It's not going to melt as fast, and you're going to wind up like you do when you infuse it with res lots of residue. And it, the, <laughs> if you like very crunchy cookies, then you can use Sakura or Katari. But I find that Fariana makes it much nicer. And while this recipe is not in my book, all the, there are other recipes in the book, and it gives you a chance to figure out how you want to play with it. And as you know, this is my book. I'm still selling it. You can get it through me. Or you could go to Lulu if you're out of the United States. If you're out of the United States, the uh, they have, that's my publisher is Lulu. And they have printing houses all over the world, so shipping will be much less. You won't get it signed by me, but at least you'll get it. So <clears throat> I suggest that you either go to Lulu it's in the it's in the uh the link is in the uh in the group or you go to my website and get it the other thing i want to discuss with you is <clears throat> and it's in the comments and it's in the announcement of this of this is before you start asking me questions is a lot of people have asked me you know which resin should i get well different resins for different folks even though a lot of them do different things and you can read that in my book 
or you can read that in the frankincense group, what works for one might not work for the other. Also, a lot of people might not like the smell of one versus the other or how it burns versus the other. So what I did is I made kits. And in these kits, you get five different resins. In the first kit, and it looks basically like this. Basically like this. And I wrap it. You don't get it like this. I wrap in bubble wrap so that you get it in one piece. But they're basically like this. An ounce is more than enough to play with. It's more than enough to uh, burn. It's more than enough to actually an ounce is all you need to infuse it. So, uh, and you use less of an ounce if you powder it and put it in tea because you only use a teaspoon. So the first kit has Baswella Fariana in it, second grade Fariana, not even third grade, Baswella Rivea, Baswella Black Neglecta, Katari Bach, and Myrrh. The second kit, which is this one, kit two, and you and depending on what else you're getting, you're not going to get it in this bag. You're going to get it. Uh, probably wrapped individually in its own bag. And the second one is, again, Fariana. Then you have Serrata, so you have a change. Then you have Katari first grade. Then you have Tafaria, and you have a Papanix. So you have, and there's five in here. So there's more than enough to play with and to figure out what you want. And right now I'm giving 10% off on it. And the code is resin kits. And unfortunately I put it in here as lowercase, but it's all in caps. And you put it in as checkout and I will fix it once, once we're no longer live. So uh, it's a great combination of kits to have so that you can check out each one of the resins and decide which one you like, and then you can order from me uh, a larger quantity when you figure out which one you want. So at this point, anybody got any questions? Anybody? Come on. There are 10 people in here. I'm sure somebody's got a question. I'm going to give you a minute to think. So I hope everybody's staying safe. And uh, since it is a great, it seems to be a good time to have it at this hour, since I, I'd like to be able to pull in those from Australia, those from uh, Europe, and, uh, and Belgium, and anywhere else, that would be a great uh I would think this is a good time. So uh, eight, nine o'clock at night is not bad. So, okay, so come on guys, ask me a question, ask me anything. I'm waiting for your questions. I need a question, Nobody, everybody knows everything, nobody has a question, right? I'm waiting. I don't see a question yet. You would, Lily asks, all right, I don't have a question about the sample, but I have another question. You don't have to ask me about the, quest, the sample kit. You can ask me anything. But the first question is, Lily said, I would like to know about the energetics of frankincense. What do you mean by energetics? Can you explain that a little bit? For me because uh, frankincense is very balancing so whether you use it by itself or you mix it with other resins or you burn it it gives you a sense of ore it gives you a sense of balance it gives you uh, it makes you relax as you know some of them are very good about 
Uh, some of them are very good for pain. It depends on which one you're going to use. No, they don't cure the virus. They are not antiviral. They're antibacterial. The only thing it'll help with is if, God forbid, you get pneumonia, it might, might, not will cure it, and it might, it, there's no may or buts or what, but maybe it'll ease some of the symptoms. But that's about all it'll do. So, but the question isn't about the sample kit. It's about anything you want to ask me. So now that you got me, ask me. So Ingrid, ask your question. And if I answered you, Lily, uh, yes, and if no, you can ask me further. So uh, frankincense is also very spiritual. Spiritual. Oh, God, let me tell you. It's very spiritual. So it's how, when you burn it, especially with uh, certain ones of them. So Ingrid wants to know, when do you put essential oils in the infusion with frankincense? When you make an infusion and leave the frankincense for 30 or 40 days, I want to add, you add it after it's all done, in the beginning of the process at the end. It is at the end. You do not add the essential oil in the beginning. You let the... Uh, Resin goes through its, think of it, think of the infusion as a carrier oil. So you want the resin to go through its uh, infusion process where all the good stuff comes through. And then if you want to put an essential oil in, once you've strained it, then you put an essential oil in. I put, if I need something very, very powerful that the uh, carrier oil or the infusion of the resin is not enough, then I will add the uh, an essential oil, depending on which one I'm looking for, as an extra boost to make it more powerful. And I will add it at the end. Uh, Lily says, as a clinical herbalist, I've been taught that every herb has a tendency to be warming, cooling, or neutral, dry or wet. This helps in putting it into a formula for someone's uh, constitution. That's true. Uh, most of the resins are warming. So they give a very warm effect. Uh, they really don't give a cooling effect. They can be neutral only if you're mixing it with other blends, with other herbs. It depends uh, what herb you're mixing it with. So if you're mixing it with a blend, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're mixing it with a, uh, if you're making an infusion and the infusion is, let's say, cool, it's a cooler infusion, then... <clears throat> you can, if you mix the frankincense in with it, you're going to get more of a neutral between the two of them. So it's all a matter of what you use to make the actual, how you want the blend. If you want it just a warming effect, then you would use frankincense by itself because it's more of a one gets in. So it's more of a warming effect. I really haven't seen any of them that are more of a cooling effect. So uh, I find that more in the essential oils. If I want to make an infusion with frankincense and myrrh, first of all, you spelled myrrh wrong, but that's okay. Do I put them together in a jar or I make them separate? You make them totally separate. Frankincense and myrrh, while they are a, while they are similar in the fact that myrrh, the resin comes out of the tree just like frankincense does, it's still a totally separate plant, a separate tree, sorry. You make the infusion of frankincense first, 
Then you make the, and alongside it in a different jar, you make the myrrh. Myrrh is very bitter. It has a very bitter smell. If you mix it together, if you mix it together, what's going to happen is you're going to have a very weird smell. And, but when you separate it and you mix them separately, you can determine by the smell as you pour it in how you like how it smells. You also don't want, they're totally different uses. So you don't want to overpower each one of them. I tell people don't put a lot of myrrh in frankincense because what happens, it will take over. And since the smell is, is such, it's got such a bitter smell and frankincense has a very light and in some cases a very perfumey smell, you're going to wind up with a problem. If you want to cut, let's say you're using Katari. Katari has a very high perfumey type smell, sweet, high perfumey type smell. If you want to cut the smell, then you put some myrrh in it. But you experiment with it and keep smelling it to see how you like it. Because if you just pour it in, what's going to happen, it's com going to completely take over the, over the frankincense and you're not going to smell the frankincense at all. So, uh, and it also will take over all its therapeutic properties. So you're not going to have that balance that you need. Uh, let's see. You, Lily says you mentioned in another video that we can make a tincture with frankincense or myrrh. What are some of the uses with it? I missed your explanation when I was typing out. Okay. So what I'm what you can do with myrrh is excellent for any mouth problems. So if you make a tincture of myrrh, you want to use the highest level of alcohol that you can. I use Everclear because it's the highest level. And uh, once you've done it and you allow it to sit in the uh, in the alcohol for about two weeks you want to get it red as red as you can get so you want it as red as my bottle so or even a little less so the redder it is the better it is so when it becomes uh red you know you've pulled almost all of it out and at that point what i do is i take i put it in a glass jar and then I, I strain it, and then I put it in a glass jar. Sometimes, because it's so bitter, I'll put like, I would say a couple of days before I strain it, I'll put some mint leaves in it, because it's got such a bitter taste. And, uh, and I let the mint suck out and infuse out, so the mint gets into the myrrh a little bit. And then I strain the whole thing. When I strain it, it goes into a jar, and then I take an eye dropper, little, I guess it's about one ounce jar with, an eye, with a glass eye dropper, and I put that in. And I take two ounces of water, usually spring water, and uh, I squeeze one squeeze of it into the water. And then I... Uh, swish it all around in my mouth. It's good for, I've given it to people who had root canal where they came out of the dentist and it all wore off and they thought they were going to die. So I gave a client of mine a little bottle of it and he was in heaven. He swished it around and within 15 minutes he had no pain. It's very good for any type of mouth issues any type of gum issues, if you cut your gum, if you cu I cut my tongue from talking once, and I went and I grabbed it and I swished it around, and I had no pain. And that's basically what myrrh is used for. The tincture of frankincense is basically very similar. You, with the alcohol, I do not remember, I do not recommend ingesting it. Uh, 
it's not really good in uh, alcohol to ingest it. So, but you can use it in your mouth the same way. You can use it for uh, any type of uh, a, of a toothache. But uh, I like tincturing myrrh more than I tincture frankincense. I'd rather infuse it, or if I want it internally, I will put it into a capsule and take it that way. So let's see, there's another comment, and if I can get it down, whoops, I'm trying to move it, come on, all right, let's see, hi, all right, I was told that myrrh is blood thinning and not to give to people who take blood thinners. Well, there is, uh, I'm trying to get it down, before I answer that question, I'm going to answer the one under it that I could see. Do you use a certain ratio with frankincense and myrrh? You mean as in an infusion? What I usually do is I take a quarter percent of myrrh. Let's say I would take about an ounce of myrrh. If, I had, if it was four ounces, I would take probably a, using myrrh as the one, I would probably do a one to four ratio. So one ounce of myrrh to four ounces, one ounce of myrrh to four ounces of frankincense, depending on which way you like it. I would go very slow because as I said, it's gonna overpower the, uh, the formula and myrrh is very, very strong. So you wanna use very little of it. Uh, Ingrid says, I was told that myrrh is blood thinner, not to give it to people who take blood thinners. Myrrh moves the blood. So I'd be very careful with people who are on blood thinners. Myrrh doesn't bother me. I take blood thinners. So it doesn't bother me. But if you're on blood thinners, I would be very careful. It is also said that women that are menstruating should not use myrrh because as I said, it moves the blood. So if it's moving the blood, it means your period is going to be a lot heavier. I would not, it is not recommended whether you use the essential oil or the myrrh to use during pregnancy for basically the same reason. So you don't wanna take, any, you definitely don't wanna take any chances because when you're pregnant, you know there's a lot, of, you know, you basically get, have a lot of problems to begin with, especially in the, in the first trimester. I would stay away from her completely. Frankincense is, except for serrata, which also, unfortunately, serrata is, uh, should not be used with those that have blood uh, that have any kind of blood problems or a heart condition. And we have the explanation in the announcements in the group. It has estradiol in it, which is a chemical that uh, has to do with the platelets in your, in your, in your cells and in, your in the blood in your body. And it has shown to cause uh, those that are on blood thinners to thin their blood even more, and it can cause hemorrhaging. So you do want to stay away from serrata. That includes the essential oil because the estradiol is in the essential oil besides being in the resin. Lily asks, would an apple cider vinegar extraction be similar? Sometimes we get sober client trying to get... I don't know about apple cider vinegar because I don't think it'll pull the resin out enough. You need that alcohol to pull it out. You could try it and see what happens, but uh, I don't think the vinegar extraction will pull the res enough of the resin out to actually do something. I think you're better off doing an infusion. Uh, because with an infusion, it will pull it out and you can use it topically. And as you know, we can cook with it. So uh, you're better off doing it that way. 
or you can put it into a capsule. But in, in a capsule, you have to be uh, very, very careful because it can lead to diarrhea. I don't recommend taking more than one or two capsules a day because otherwise you're going to be living in the toilet. So, <laughs> uh, and that's a problem. And you have to basically see how your body reacts to it some people might not be able to handle more than one capsule a day. It's very, very anti-inflammatory. Lily asks for the contradictions for myrrh or frankincense. The only contradiction, as I said, for frankincense is serrata. Also, they think that Qatari might have a little bit of estradiol in it. In some cases, some people who are hemophiliacs have had problems with Qatari. I would just be very careful. With myrrh, myrrh, as I said, moves the blood. So during pregnancy, do not use it. During uh, your menstrual cycle, do not use it. And uh, if you're on blood thinners, make sure you check your blood levels to make sure it doesn't interfere with uh, your blood levels. Uh, anybody else? Let's see if I missed anybody. Uh, let's see. I'm going up and looking. All right. Anybody else have any, uh, I like, myrrh is beautiful. When you break it open, if you get good myrrh, like what I sell, the inside it oozes out so any resin that you buy whether you buy it from me or you buy it from somebody else make sure that first of all they do fair trade like i do and that they are very that they will uh that the places that they're purchasing it from uh do sustainability so that's very important the other thing is know what you buy. Do not buy it from someone who has absolutely no idea what the name of it is. Because if he doesn't know what the name of it is, you're going to have a bigger problem because you're going to wind up with junk. And you can actually wind up with synthetic resin. It's out there. And I've gotten many complaints from people who told me, I, bought the, I got this resin from a friend or I bought, or I bought, uh, or I bought it from uh, someone I don't know off the street or in a uh, in a market, and he had no idea what it is. Well, then don't buy it, because if he doesn't know how much, how, if he doesn't know uh, what it is, then you, and you don't know what it is. For all you know, it could be synthetic resin. Synthetic resin is they mix rocks in with the resin and they'll pour essential oil over the resin and then call it resin. So, which is not exactly a good thing that you want to get. I've seen that a lot. And uh, I've seen people uh, tell me, that it smells very funky and very funny, or it gives them a headache. Well, if it gives you a headache, there's something wrong with that resin. So you got to be extremely careful when you buy resin. We're very extremely careful when we buy essential oils. So you need to be careful when you buy resin because there's a lot of synthetic resin out there. So don't buy it from someone who absolutely doesn't know. If it just says frankincense on the package, no, you don't want it because you don't know unless you know exactly which frankincense it is. You don't want to buy it because now you're stuck with it and you don't know what to do with it. And it's very hard for us to figure out what resin it is because on a picture, it could look like anything. Uh, somebody asked how much myrrh in the alcohol, uh, basically I would put, 
I believe it is, if I remember correctly, because I put it in my book, it is approximately, well, it's 30 grams, which is about an ounce. So it's an ounce of resin to about eight ounces of alcohol. That's all you need. And as I said, you let it, you cover it, you let it sit and you shake it a little bit. If you shake it too much, it'll explode. So <laughs> know somebody who shook it and the whole thing exploded. Don't shake, don't shake. Just move it around a little bit in alcohol. Because if you do shake it, you're going to have a very big problem. So just, you know, turn it around a little bit. Don't open it. Just turn it around. The other thing I'm... Uh, you need to do is put some either wax paper over it or plastic wrap because if you try to open that jar it's going to be stuck to it resin gets very sticky so you'll never be able to open the jar so if you put a little bit of plastic over it or parchment paper or even wax paper you'll be able to open the jar but please do not shake it the only thing you can shake is when you infuse it then you can shake it in the carrier oil but do not shake it in the alcohol because it can explode so be very careful with that let's see rattle your brain away i'm here <laughs> Which frankincense is the best for anti-wrinkle? Katari. Katari is the best for anti-wrinkles. Katari is mostly used for skin conditions. So if you purchase Katari and you infuse it, and you can infuse it in any type of carrier oil, as long as it's a carrier oil, as long as it has fatty acids in the oil, you can infuse it with. I would not infuse it in olive oil because if you're using it for wrinkles, it's going to be disgusting for your skin. So I would infuse it in a light oil, which is very interesting because people ask me about anti-wrinkle and the basuelic extract that I sell, the powder is excellent for wrinkles. I use it for the fine lines in here that I have, I use it every day. I don't have any more fine lines left. So uh, it works great. Uh, it also lightens the skin. So if you have any dark spots, this spot, well, this spot, because I'm opposite, this spot here, as you can see, was so dark that I put so much makeup on it and I, and I used the extract and it totally lightened it it didn't get rid of it but it lightened it enough so that i didn't have to uh i don't wear makeup on it anymore so but katari katari is for the skin katari is excellent for any kind of uh edema for any kind of dermatitis uh for eczema Katari is the one to use. Can you endorse a trusted essential oil manufacturer? No, because this is a resin group, not an essential oil group. We do not talk about essential oils in here unless it has some relationship to the resin. Uh, I will not recommend, I mean, there's a couple that I use myself but I will not recommend it in here. If you want, you can message me later and I'll give you, uh, I will tell you in private, but I can't tell you in here. Yeah, Lily, I know somebody, I know you said that, uh, I never knew to shake. No, you can't shake it. Uh, unfortunately, I had a, uh, I'm glad he said it to me because I was going to shake it. And he said, don't shake it because if you shake it, it'll explode. And I said, you're kidding. And he goes, no, it's alcohol in there. Do you shake alcohol? I go, no. So he said, a combination of the alcohol and the myrrh, if you shake it, really shake it, the pressure that's in there will cause it to explode. So you don't want to shake it. You just want to move it around. Hey, Rifka. 
Yes. So you can, you can, the, let me tell you a little bit about the Baswellic, uh, about the, ex, the, the, ex, the uh, expe, Baswellic extract. I'll get it out. Let me get a drink because I'm running dry. Okay, that's better. The extract that I sell, which is the powder, and what it is, it's the distillation after the, uh, it's after the, it's the byproduct left over after distillation. And what a company that I buy it from, what they did is they actually uh, got it into a, they were able to dry it into a fine powder without using anything, without using anything, uh, any solvent. It's all natural, it's organic, and you use one teaspoon in a uh, four ounce jar of very similar to Cetaphil. It's, a, it's called a simple lotion. It's a white cream and it has no fragrance in it. So it's all natural and you can find it anywhere. You can find it online. Cetaphil is one of them, it comes in a jar. And what you do is you take a teaspoon of it in four ounces of the cream. You can put it in another jar, mix it up. It mixes very well. And I would just give it about an hour or two to really get in there. And then you can put it onto the fine lines. If you use it in a uh, carrier oil, then you got to give it at least two weeks because it's, it doesn't as dissolve as fast as it does in the lotion. And you got to give it about two weeks. And then you can also, depending on what carrier oil, as long as you use a light carrier oil, you can use Malusa or Marusa oil. You can use Aragon oil. Those are very light oils. You can use coconut oil. Anything that's a lighter oil. And then you just put it on you strain it and then you put it on wherever you got your wrinkles no matter where they are on your face so it's a very uh big good great product to get it comes by volume i sell it at 45 grams so you get it in a jar so it gives you enough for a long time uh Ingrid asks, what is the effect of the gold leaf in the frankincense infusion? From what I'm told about the gold leaf, the gold leaf has its own energy. So when you stick it into the infusion, besides the fact that it looks pretty, and you make sure you get a uh, gold leaf that's edible. It doesn't have to be kosher if you're not kosher, but it has to be edible because you don't want something that is metal that is going on your skin. And what it's supposed to do is it's basically, it's the gold leaf is not metal when it's, when it's uh, edible. And what it, it's supposed to do, it's supposed to give it an aura of a balance, like a very mystical aura of a balance. That's basically what it does. And it does, uh, it gives, it gives a balance to the entire uh, infusion that you're making. And it's pretty. So it also gives you a beautiful look. Okay, yeah. All right. So I use Cetaphil, but I have ventured into making lotion. So I'm thinking of oil infusion with a water extraction. When you use water, just so you know, when you, yeah, that, when you use water, understand that once you put water into a bottle, water is the first thing that's going to get bacteria. So if you're not using it within a week or two weeks time, you're going to wind up getting some bacteria in there and then you're going to get these little looms in there or black spots and you'll have to throw the whole thing out. 
So be very careful when you do a water extraction because water does contain bacteria. When I tell people to, when they make the frankincense water, a week in the refrigerator, that's it. After a week, it starts to go bad. Even though frankincense is a natural preservative, it's the first thing that goes bad that makes the entire uh, formulation bad. So be very careful when you use water. And yes, whoops, I can't get it to go down. Hold it a second. And as Rifka said, it brings out a uh, natural glow in the skin, which it does. It really does. Uh, let me go back up so I can see. Okay. Ingrid asked Mar Yusa oil. Yes, it's M U R. I got to write it down. It's either Mar. I think it's M A R L. Marula. M A R U L A is what it's called. I use it on my hair. I actually use it on my hair. I bought a bottle about this big. I have very flyaway hair, very thin hair. And I take a little bit of it and I put it through my hair. And it doesn't make me look like I am I have hair out to here. So uh, my hair is very fine and it's very like cotton candy. So I put it on a little bit, tiny little bit on my hair, and it makes my hair very nice. It also is, it, it, I like it better than argon oil because, because it's so light. So that's it, Marula, M-A-R-U-L-A. So that, that's basically what it is. Which Frank has the best medical properties to make an infusion with? There is none. My suggestion to you is read the resin.pdf, frankincense resin.pdf. Each one of them have a different medical property, and it all depends what you're going to use it for. So uh, there's no best. There is no best when it comes to frankincense. It's which one works better for you. I have people that thought, that tell me, well, uh, Fariana works for me, but uh, Sacra works better for me. So it's a matter, that's why I tell you to buy the kits. So this way you can check out which one you want and you can uh, figure out for you which works better for you. Uh, that's the purpose of why I made these kits because this way you can check out each one and see which one you like and which one works better for you. It works very similar to the same thing in, like the essential oil. The ascent, and that's the only thing I'm going to say about essential oil. Every essential oil works different. What works one better for one might not work better for the other, but for you. It might work wonderful for you, but work horrible for the next person. Resins work the same way. So you have to basically trial and error and see which one works better for you. Whoops, wait a minute. This is lovely because it doesn't give me which one. Okay, so anybody else have any, any other questions? So, as I said, that's why I made the kit, because everybody kept asking me, what is the best time to have the effusion made, 30, 40, or 50? Okay, there are different feelings about this, and it depends on which resin you're using. The, uh, some people will do it for 30 days. Some, the longer you let it sit, the stronger it gets. So if you have no patience, then you let it sit for 30 days. If you have more patience, then you let it sit for 60 days. 60 days is the best amount to let it sit. As I said, the longer it sits, the better it is, the stronger it gets. There is the idea that you can, you really want to get mystical about it, 
you can put it one day in the sun and then wait for a full moon. Full moon doesn't come at the same time in every country. Uh, when it when you have a full moon, if you could set it outside, that would be wonderful. But if it's freezing where you are, you don't want to set it outside because it's just way too cold. But if you have a window where you know the moon shines in, then you sit it in the moon for the 12 hours that it's going to be in the moon where it's dark out. Then you take it out and you put it in a cool, dark place for the remainder of the 58 days. You can do the same, if there's a moon within 30 days, you can do it that way too. It, there's no rhyme or reason that you can't do an, uh, an, uh, an infusion for 30 days. And no, Putting three or four ounces into a six ounce uh, will not make it will not give make it stronger after thirty days. Actually, it 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 makes it worse. So I would stick with the ounce. You can use the ounce whole, or you can powder it. And I would make one ounce. The rule is one ounce to eight ounces of wood, of, I'm sorry, eight ounces of, of, an, of carrier oil. If you want it a little strong, especially if you've never done it before, I would do it to eight ounces because the resin is very strong to begin with. So if you find that the first time you do it, and I would make a small amount and experiment. So I would do... Uh, Actually, I would do four ounces, and then I would do half an ounce of, uh, of the resin and see how you like it. If you find that it's not strong enough, then the next time you make it, you will cut it down to about six ounces of, of uh, carrier oil to about one ounce of... Uh, resin understand resin is very every, very strong even if you take the one ounce that i have in the package and you smell it if you take the resin and you actually you actually smell it you open this up and smell it i could smell it through the package and i have it sealed so amazing how strong the resin is. You know, you look at it and you say, okay, it's, uh, it's rocks. Yeah, it is rocks. So there are all different ways to do it. Uh, Rivka has a recipe where she does it for 120 days. So I think that's a long time, but everybody has their own feeling. Uh, the uh she claimed she was the first one to do the formula and uh could be but i've read further back that people have done it uh the moon and the sun and the moon uh in biblical times also so everybody is different here in belgium we have a lot of rain i think it's better to make the infusion in the summer because of a whole day you have that much rain all you need is one day. I make the infusions in the winter and it, it can be snowing and cold outside. And uh, when it's cold and snowy outside, the sun is very hot. So if you put it in front of a window, you actually can get, you actually can get the heat of the sun. So, and if you don't want the heat of the sun, then, uh, and if you, uh, and if you don't want the heat of the sun, then you can actually put it in a warm bath for about 40 minutes. The only one you don't want to do is Fariana because it melts very fast. That one I wouldn't do more than 20 minutes. You can put it in the warm bath for 40 minutes 
that is your son. And uh, then when there's a full moon, you put it in your window. It doesn't have to sit outside. There's no law that says it, it has to sit outside. So no, it does not have to be outside. I don't put it outside in the winter and I do a lot of my infusions in the winter because <clears throat> I need to be able to make product. So no, it does not have to be outside. There's no law that said it has to be outside. That's why a lot of people will do the warm bath because that gives the same, it gives like a jump start. So it gives you the warmth of the quote sun in the warm bath. And then you just put it in your window where the moon comes through on that angle and that's it. And then you're fine. There's no law that says it has to be mystical either. It's more of a folk tale that it's mystical. If you don't have any moon and you don't have any sun, what if you live in uh, Alaska and you get nothing for six months of the year? Then uh, it's a, as I said, it's a folklore. It has nothing to do with the actual resin. Everybody feels how, what's best for them. Whether you want to use that way of doing it, that's fine. If you don't want to use that way of doing it, that's fine too. There's no rhyme or reason. There's no law. It's not a rule. It's what you want to do. You will accomplish the same thing. It might not be, quote, mystical, but at least you can still use it for the same reason. There's lots of times I've made it and, there, and it, the weather was horrible in the winter. And I missed the full moon. I actually missed it, totally missed it. Doesn't mean I'm going to throw out my infusion because it still works. It's what you feel inside that matters. It's not what, uh, it's not a matter of what, uh, what it's, what it's set in blood. It's not set in blood. It's how you feel. If you're not mystical, then don't do it that way. If you're looking for it uh, to work, it doesn't matter which way you do it, whether you do it mystical or non-mystical, it's still going to work. So anybody else? So, uh, so you definitely can do it in the winter. That's not a problem. So don't think you can't. Hey, Sandra. Sandra is one of my moderators. She joined us. So anybody else? Anybody else have any other questions? We have 10 people in here. Only three people, four people ask questions. So anybody else? I give you a minute because it takes a minute for it to scroll up. Hey, Liz, how you doing? I hope everybody's staying safe. Uh, anybody, anybody, anybody? So uh, if you have any other questions, now's the time to ask. So uh, I give you a few more minutes and then we'll end. But... Talk about my, I did talk about my fairy and the cookies. You weren't here. You didn't hear it. I talked about my fairy and the cookies. You want to hear about my fairy and the cookies again? I will give you a little bit about the fairy and the cookies again. In fact, Kathy Wilcox made it with a different recipe and it came out very well, very good. Ingrid said, I'm in, the I'm in the procedure of my first infusion, 31 days, and I'm so excited for the results. That's great. That's great. As I said, 30 days is fine, too. You don't have to let it sit longer. So you were listening while cleaning. Wonderful. 
<laughs> you were listening, my client. At least you were listening. And you're cleaning. You want to come clean my house? You can use the cleaning too. You made the cookies last night and they came out nice. I'm telling you, I can't keep them away from my husband. They are, uh, they, they, uh, I give you a close up again of the cookie. So I think I've become famous of my Fariana cookies. Uh, as I said, Fariana is the best one to do with it because the cookie Fariana melts a lot faster than any of the other resins. So if you follow my directions on how to put it together, I'm not saying you have to use everything that I used because, uh, because the, uh, Kathy used a different type of, uh, flour than I did. And as I said, you can use whatever flour your heart likes and you can use whatever sugar you like. It's, I just gave you the basic recipe. I just told you basically, uh, what you should, how you should do it. Because you definitely want to mix the farriana in with the butter or margarine, whatever you're using, whether you're using butter or margarine. Uh, almond butter is non dairy. Uh, coconut, I used, I actually used in this one, I used almond butter. I had almond butter in the house. So I used almond margarine butter. And, uh, and that's what you want to put the farriana in. Because you want it to mix and you want it, and then you mix everything else together and then you drop it onto the, you can look at the pictures I have. You can drop it on with a teaspoon, but you got to watch it. You really got to watch it because the first couple of ones started to burn. So I had to lift it up higher. My, I have a very hot oven. So I had to lower my oven to 345 instead of 350. And, uh, Mm, it's delicious. <laughs> and uh, they came out wonderful. Even the back came out nice. And they are absolutely delicious. You must try this recipe. Yeah, I have, uh, I made about 30. I have about 20 left, and I made them yesterday. So, uh the Fariana gives it a nice taste with the chocolate. Our resins pest safe. Yes, they are. I have, uh, I'll give you an example. My girlfriend has a German Shepherd and it has hip displacement. And the medicine that she was giving him was giving him a very bad upset stomach. So what I did is, I made her an infusion of serrata and I gave her a small jar and I made it in a hoba because a hoba, actually I made it in coconut oil because coconut oil is edible. As long as you make something that is inedible. And uh, I gave her the jar and I told her to rub it on his hip. And if he licks it, it's no big deal. And she said for the first time in a long time, he was able to get up and walk. So I was like thrilled. It definitely, they use a lot of the resin infusions for horses, for their legs, especially race horses. A lot of, a lot of the trainers will actually use infusions in their legs to help them with, uh, you know, when their legs get uh, bad and tired. So, uh, so it, 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 it's, you know, it's very good for that. The, uh, and now it's funny because she uses it on and off. She doesn't need it as much because it really helps him. And when he's in pain, he goes over to the jar and pushes it with his nose as if to tell her, mommy, please put this on me. It's just unbelievable. I was so thrilled that it was working on him. So yes, it can be used on animals. It's not like essential oils. You're using the raw material. As long as you use it in moderation 
and use a little bit uh, at a time, it should be fine. It could be even used on cats. So uh, where you can't use essential oils on cats, you can definitely use the resin on a cat. So uh, just a little bit, not a lot, because you don't because if they lick it too much, they could get diarrhea. That's about all they could get. So you want to put you don't want to put a thick smear. You just want to rub it into their skin. So. It can be used, uh, my, I have a friend who uses it on her bird. So <laughs> the bird's feather on the side, he got some kind of, a, she's got a parrot, and it's got some kind of an inflammation on the side of its breast. So she took a little bit of the Qatari infusion, and she actually used regular Qatari. She made a powder infusion. And she infused it in, I don't know, she infused it in a hoba. And uh, she put it on the side of his breast, and it actually got rid of the, uh, the inflammation and the rash. I thought that was amazing. And the bird, the bird didn't die from it, so you can use it on birds. In fact, I'll give you another. Ryan is one of our administrators, and he sells resins also. And he's very big when it comes to sacra. He knows everything you could possibly know about sacra. He's got birds. And when he wants to shut them up because they've, they've gotten agitated, he will burn the resin. And all of a sudden, it becomes dead silent, and they go to sleep. So it doesn't hurt them. I mean, it doesn't put it on top of them. But uh, it's enough so that they can smell it. And they all, he's got about four of them. And one by one, it is, becomes dead silent. I've been on the phone with him, and they were streaking away. And all of a sudden, I got quiet. And I said, how come you're quiet? He goes, I'm burning resin. So... Uh, so it, it definitely can hurt them. The only thing I would be careful, Lily, is uh, if you're going to, if the dog eats it, be very careful because one thing about resins, they can make your stomach very loose. So you want to use very li little. I mean, it, you don't want to sit there and eat six cookies because you might find you're in the bathroom. So even though there's a little bit in 30 cookies, but... I've been eating the cookies at night. Yeah, see, you have a parrot that never shuts up. You should try getting the resin and burning it. So, uh, and you'd be very surprised. So, <laughs> it, might, it might calm them down. So, uh, animals can definitely be around resins. I would just, if you're burning it, just be careful if you're using a fire. That's the same thing with children. Keep it out of reach. So uh, if you, even if you're using an electric burner, it still gets very, very hot. So I would definitely keep it out of reach. So uh, that goes with anything. My mother has psoriasis in her hair, and the doctors have given her an oily medication. Do you think a non-oily solution with myrrh? I wouldn't use myrrh for her hair. I would do it with frankincense. I would use Qatari. I would try it with Qatari first and see uh, and use uh, Qatari for, uh, what was I going to say, in a very light, you could try the, the marula oil and uh, see if it works in that and see if, uh, if that helps. The marula oil, when you wash it, comes out. Because as I said, I use it. As soon as you wash it, it's gone. And you, and you only need a little bit on your head. So if you make it, if you buy the and it's expensive, so be very careful where you, where you buy it. Because that oil is not cheap. But if you infuse a little bit of it, I think I bought four ounces of it and it was like 20 bucks for four ounces so be very careful uh i believe 
Aromatic International sells it, and because that's where I bought it, I happen to like theirs. And but you can shop around and see where you can get it. Just make sure you get the pure stuff. And you can also try a hydrosol. You can try a frankincense Katari hydrosol and see if that helps with uh, her psoriasis in 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 her hair. Uh, you can talk to me afterwards. I sell the hydrosol, but I don't sell it online. So uh, you can talk to me and I can make a bottle for you and send it to you straight. The uh, I don't like mailing hydrosols only because of weather conditions. There's no preservatives in my hydrosols. So, but I will if I speak to you privately. But as I said, you, uh, so, uh, but you can try uh, Qatari and see if that works. You can also try the extract because I know somebody who used the extract for diaper rash. That was surprising. She messaged me and she said, my baby had diaper rash and I tried the Baswellic extract that you have and it actually got rid of the diaper rash. Okay. So there's another use. So you could buy the, you can actually buy it and not put it in an infusion of carrier oil. I would put it into the simple lotion and because it's lighter. And I would massage it into her head and see if that helps. It also has the boswellic acid in there, which might bring down the inflammation that's in the psoriasis. You can try that. So how can you use them when they're not fresh, right? Like the boiling water will be okay. So with hot, Lily says, can you use them when they're not fresh, right? Like the boiling water will be okay. All right, with a hydrosol, you have to be careful because the hydrosols have to sit in the refrigerator. They have no uh, preservatives in them. They're water and they're left, they're the byproduct left over after, when you do the distillation, they're what's used, they're the water that's used for the distillation. So there's no preservatives in there. So you gotta be very careful with, uh, with hydrosol because uh, the uh, because of that reason, so uh, they are fresh. They're fresh because they come from the distillation. They're put in the refrigerator. They can, the frankincense hydrosols can last about two hours. Highly, the frankincense hydrosols can last about two two years, sorry, uh, the most in the refrigerator. What you will see if they get bad is in the, first of all, they won't be clear anymore, and you'll have white looms floating through them. Then you throw them out because then it's not, then it's not good. So it can last about two years in, in the refrigerator. Because frankincense, as I said, is a natural preservative, but you're still talking about water. But you, and it's boiled water. So it's a little bit different than just taking spring water and putting it into the refrigerator because all the bacteria and everything has come out of it. But it can only stay about two years. So you also have to be careful where you buy it. You want to see what their expiration date is on the hydrosol. And they should be telling you when you purchase it. If it's three years old, don't buy it. So if it's over two years, don't buy it. So, uh, and that's only with frankincense. It has nothing to do with any other plant material. So anybody else? So, uh, anybody, anybody else have any other questions? As I said, I want everybody to try my cookies. So, 
<laughs> no, the, the hydrosol has no boswellic acid in it. The only thing that has the boswellic acid in the hydrosol is the uh, afterbirth. I call it an afterbirth, but it's the aftermath that's left over after distillation. The boswellic acid is too heavy a molecule to come through the distillation. It is not in the essential oil. It is not in the hydrosol. The only place it's in is in the sludge that's left over at the bottom of the barrel. Other than that, it's not. So the, the, uh, the boswellic acid is in the powder that I sit. That's the only way you can get the boswellic acid. Or the boswellic acid is in the resin. So when you're infusing it, you're pulling some of the boswellic acid out of the resin, the ones that have boswell. Not all of them have it. Ferriana doesn't have uh, boswellic acid in it. It has, but it's so minute, it's not going to make any difference. Katari does, Sakura does, Sarada does, uh, Papharia does, and I probably left out one. And uh, Dizelli has uh, a high amount of boswellic acid in it, but we actually don't use Dizelli for uh, the resin. We use the medicinal properties in Dizelli or, or in the bark. And the bark actually, from what I've researched, has the boswellic acid in it too. So no, it's not in the hydrosol. The only reason I recommended the hydrosol was that it is there are a lot of things you can use the frank the different frankincense hydrosols for the same that you can use for the resins is what you can use the hydrosols for so if you read up on the different resins and what their therapeutic properties are the hydrosols do the same thing they're just much lighter but they don't have the boswellic acid in it so that part is not the same. So yeah, I'm like a walking encyclopedia, Lily. <laughs> but I don't remember a lot. So when I do remember it, uh, and as I said, a lot of it is in my book. So uh, Lee is giving you the link to my uh to my website and my book is on there too by the way if you get my book if you don't get my book uh from lulu and you purchase it from me and i would prefer if you're in the united states especially now to purchase it from me because it takes forever to get out of the country is if you purchase it from me you will get uh my i will sign it for you so every book gets a personal signature from me also those uh that purchase the book <clears throat> will get 20 percent off on everything up until <coughs> excuse me that's because i'm talking too much we'll get 20 percent off everything in my store if you purchased your book overseas then you have to take a chance if you're going if you want the coupon and you prove to me that you purchased it i will give you the coupon uh you know the name of the coupon but uh if you purchase it from me and it's going to come from the united states it's got to go priority or dhl express right now because it's taking too long to get to your countries so until the pandemic is over, this is the only choice I have. And uh, it's not cheap. It comes out somewhere between $30 and $40 to ship to you. But if you buy the book uh, through Lulu, the shipping outside the United States is a lot less. So uh, also, as I said, the samples are on sale for 10% off until the end of may 
uh, the coupon I have to fix because it's resin kits, but it's all in capitals. So you have to put it all in capital letters or I don't think they'll take it. So, but I will fix it. Uh, Lee just gave the book link. Thanks, Lee. Lee is one of our administrators in the Frankincense book and Frankincense group. And Lee also helped me edit my book. So, uh, so uh, if we're done, thank you, Ingrid. Uh, you keep safe also. So I would basically say we're done. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can ask it when I send this through. So everybody stay safe. Thank you, Lee, for joining and putting up the links. And everybody, let's see if I can fix this before I log off. Let's see if I can fix this. Oh, it won't let me do it. So, oh, well. So I will fix it when we get into, when I, when I send this to the group. As I said, everybody stay safe. Thank you all for coming. And sayonara. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>